Uh, there was an article entitled The Future. And, and let, let me just uh, quote directly from that. Uh, it reads, when the nature of thunderstorm electrification is understood, it may prove possible to control this process by the introduction of chemicals into the atmosphere or by altering electrical variables. Such variables might be atmospheric conduct the conductivity, field, and space charge, or perhaps the corona-giving properties of the Earth's surface. Next paragraph. When we become sufficiently sophisticated concerning the dynamics of the atmosphere, it is possible, possible that weather may be controlled by the large-scale release of chemical or more probably thermonuclear heat energy. So they're they're talking about the new Manhattan Project here, and that's that's what the new Manhattan Project is. It's injecting particles into the atmosphere. I, I prefer to use the term saturating the atmosphere with particles. And in this case, we know that the particles are metallic particles. Uh, the number one ingredient, aluminum. Number two ingredient, barium. Number three, strontium, which has been confirmed many many times, probably thousands of times all over the world. So. The New Manhattan Project is the saturation of our atmosphere with these conductive particles, and then and then the use of electromagnetic energy from ground-based antennas known as ionospheric heaters. This is what uh, the, the energy from the ionospheric heaters manipulates the particles in the atmosphere. It can, uh, by manipulations of the, the troposphere, the stratosphere, and the ionosphere, uh, through, uh, uh, I'm aware... They, they speak of three different ways. I'm aware of two, uh, pressure and, uh, and, and heat effects are the two that I'm aware of. They also speak of Rabborn, who I'm about to get to, Admiral Rabborn. He speaks of acoustic effects. And uh, this is really si heavy scientific stuff, and I thank God I have somebody helping me with this. But, but basically, that's the new Manhattan Project, is uh, saturation of the atmosphere with metallic particles influenced by electromagnetic energy. The conventional weather modification industry doesn't do that. They don't use ground-based antennas to you know, manip manipulate the silver iodide or the dry ice that they dump out of planes. They just dump stuff in the clouds. That's all they do. But this is what distinguishes the new Manhattan Project, is this use of electromagnetic energy. This is uh, pretty, pretty dark stuff, but you know, it has to be exposed. We have to, we have to look at the darkness uh, in order to appreciate the light. So here we go. This is, I'm quoting from, from uh, this, this report written by Vonnegut in 1961. Quote, one can make an estimate of the concentration of the field around an object or man by considering the potential in space in which it exists. For example, in a field of 100 volts, and then there's some scientific uh, Stuff here, I don't really understand. But it says, in a field of, of 100 volts, a man's head is in a region where the potential is about 20,000 volts with respect to ground. Because of the relatively high con conductivity of the body, the man's head is at ground potential, and therefore a corresponding amount of charge has passed from the ground up to his head. Accordingly, we see that the field and hence the rate of aerosol deposition should be about 20 fold greater on the man's head than on the ground. Okay, translation. They're talking about the effects of electromagnetic energy upon a man's head and the relation between that energy being applied to the head and how it's just how it. Uh, works out with the, the ground, which is the body, which is standing on the earth. And, and okay, the rest of, of, of the paper outlines what they were doing. And, and I write this in the article. The report was about their experience, experiments of the previous three months involving the effects of electromagnetic energy upon a ground sphere in a small chamber surrounded by gas. So th this sphere that they're talking about, which had a ground attached to it, was a little metal sphere, I think it was metal, 
inside of a box with a ground wire attached to it, and they would pump in gas into this box and saturate the atmosphere around the sphere and then shoot electromagnetic energy at it. And in the literature, they're talking about the sphere as a man's head. So, I mean, you know, we're putting two, two and two together here, right? Oh, no, it can't be just a one, one trick pony here. You know, this, it's not all just about weather modification. You know, and then I think they might have said, you know, there's some mind control aspects going on here. And, but, uh, you know, so I immediately started, you know, saying, yes, you know, you're right. I, I do believe there are, that, that's what I'm saying now, but I do believe there are many other aspects to the new Manhattan Project, many other agendas going on. And actually, the mind control aspects of the new Manhattan Project may be the primary reason for its existence. Um, you know, if, if you could if you could really control people's minds and just have them as robots just going around doing whatever you want, I mean, that's that's more powerful than, than controlling the weather, if you ask me. But there was a 1994 document by Stanford Research International called Multiple Instrument Studies of Chemical Releases and Heating at Arecibo. Arecibo is a uh, ionospheric heater in, in Puerto Rico. And uh, they talk about in the report releasing uh, three different releases of 48 kilograms each of barium, which uh, they shot up there in rockets and the rocket exploded and the barium cloud came out and then they hit it with electromagnetic energy and turned it into a plasma. A plasma. I mean, our whole atmosphere is a plasma right now with, with what they're doing, so with the saturation of our atmosphere and then hitting it with the electromagnetic energy. I mean, we are breathing in a, a toxic slurry, a toxic plasma slurry every day.